Chapter 11, Shaping, You're Getting Warmer. The children in Ola Meg Douglas's third grade class at North Shore Elementary School didn't know it, but they were using shaping to change the behavior of their friend and classmate. During free time, at recess, the children were playing hot and cold, and they had Billy Johnson looking everywhere for a hidden tennis ball. As he got nearer to the ball, the children said, you're getting warmer. If he wandered away, they said, you're getting colder. When Billy was close to the ball, the excitement picked up and everyone chimed in. You're getting hot. Finally, as the reinforcement for going in the right direction led Billy to the hiding spot, the delighted children screamed, you're burning up. Shaping is a process used to establish a new behavior. To teach the concept, instructors often use an adult version of hot and cold. In this game, a person leaves the room and the group decides on a behavior to be shaped, such as walking to the chalkboard drawing a circle, and putting one's nose in the circle. The person returns to the room, clueless about what has been decided. He or she behaves randomly, trying to guess what is required. The designated trainer reinforces close approximations to the desired behavior with a whistle or clicker. Usually in a very short time, the person is standing with his or her nose in a chalk circle drawn on the board, and a room full of students have witnessed the power of shaping. Dog trainers can learn a lot from the way humans behave in the shaping game. First, some people in the game are better animals than others. They move about freely and engage in plenty of behavior that can be reinforced. Others, shy, embarrassed, and unsure about what they are supposed to do, are reluctant to move in one direction or another. The same variation in responses can be seen in dogs. Some will perform a wide variety of behaviors as quickly as possible almost as if they are trying to guess what they must do to earn a reward. Other dogs will shut down before your very eyes, seemingly afraid to try anything new. Trainers who try the shaping game with their dogs quickly learn that individual animals of the same species can be very different. The shaping game also makes us aware of the tendency for many of us to be verbally oriented when we try to teach something. Many trainers attempt to teach both dogs and humans with words explanations, and more words. But because dogs don't do so well with lectures, their ability to learn new tasks will ultimately depend on your ability to use shaping. How shaping works. Does it seem counterintuitive to reinforce a behavior that is not exactly what you want? Why not wait until the dog gets it right before you reinforce its behavior? Because animals don't always engage in the desired behavior on their own. For example, if the dog were to train a rabbit to play a toy piano, a trainer aware of the principles of reinforcement might say, well, I would reinforce the rabbit only when it played the piano. Good idea, but what happens when the rabbit doesn't go near the piano? Shaping is one way to get the rabbit into position. It's also a much more humane way than forcing a confused bunny into position at a piano. The rabbit and the piano would be put in a confined space. When the rabbit made its first random moves toward the piano, the behavior would be reinforced. As the rabbit moved a step closer, it would be reinforced again, and so on, until it was near the piano. Next, the rabbit might be reinforced for sitting up in front of the piano, then for placing its front paws on the keys. Before the trainer knows what has happened, the melodic sounds of Here Comes Peter Cottontail are floating through the air and shaping has taken place. Back up to the top is the definition of shaping, Shaping is reinforcing successive approximations of a desired behavior. Successive approximations are any behaviors that get the individual closer to the desired behavior or any behaviors that resemble the desired behavior. The Ultimate Teaching Tool Marion Braylon Bailey and Bob Bailey of Animal Behavior Enterprises have used shaping and other behavioral principles to train nearly 140 species of animals. Think your Afghan hound will never get that coveted utility title? Take heart. The Baileys have shown that shaping can be used to teach apes, whales, dolphins, and pigs. You already knew those animals were smart? Well, they've also used shaping to teach hamsters, chickens, vultures, albatrosses, emus, lizards, frogs, seahorses, bluegill fish, squid, rock crabs, and cockroaches. Bob Bailey and Marion Braylon Bailey have trained more than 140 species of animals using upper condition procedures such as shaping. Dog training is always shaping. The ability to use shaping is critical in teaching dogs new skills. 
Many trainers routinely use shaping procedures even though they may not be aware of the technical term for what they are doing. In agility and obedience, for example, dogs are required to go over jumps. For dogs, for bigger dogs, the jumps may be as high as three feet. To introduce dogs to jumping, trainers often start with low jumps and gradually raise them. They are successive approximations of the final behavior, a shaping procedure. Shaping can be used in dog training to teach a variety of new skills. A program for teaching a novice dog to jump might go something like this. Step one, the dog is walked on a leash through the two upright poles, stanchions, that hold the jump and is rewarded. Two, a bar is placed at ground level between the stanchions and the dog is walked over the bar on a leash. As the dog steps over the bar, the trainer gives the command jump and then rewards the dog. Step three, the bar is raised a few inches off the ground and the dog is taken over as it is told to jump. Then the dog is rewarded. Step four, the bar is raised to one foot off the ground and the dog is told jump. It is rewarded after the jump. The shaping process continues until the dog is jumping the desired height. Each trial is reinforced and eventually the leash and the trainer are no longer used. Steps in shaping. Step one, identify the desired behavior. In the previous example, the dog goes over the high jump. Step two, identify the response that can be used to begin shaping. The dog steps through the stanchions. Step three, reinforce the beginning response. Step four, gradually require closer approximations to the final behavior, reinforcing each one until the goal is reached. Things to remember about shaping. One, shaping can be used to change the form of a behavior, such as shaping a whine into a bark that the dog use, uses to signal it needs to go out, increase the frequency of a behavior, affect the time related to a behavior, such as speeding up a response, change the intensity of a behavior, such as teaching a dog to push hard enough on the equipment to release the ball in a fly box. Fly ball box. Number two, shaping is a powerful behavioral tool. It should never be used to push a dog beyond reasonable limits, such as jumping too high. Number three, for shaping to be effective, you must not move too quickly from one approximation of the desired behavior to the next. Make sure each step is firmly established before proceeding. Number four, move through the shaping process in small steps, but do not make the steps so small that training becomes boring. Step five, if the dog fails at one level, return to an easier step. Step six, consistently reinforce success at each step of the shaping process.